Rise 7.1 Pro and here we've launched and I have the camera facing north and the infinite plane and this infinite plane is going to be the water so it's going to be fully transparent a refractive index of 133 or somewhere about there usually does the trick um, no diffusion you'll notice now this has turned grey uh, you can uh, make that look fully transparent by making the diffuse white though we might play with that somewhat as we go along but uh, essentially that's that's going to look like a glass so one key feature of water is it tends to be a bit bumpy particularly when it's outside so we'll add something for the bump channel and we'll give it a bump height and if I hold shift down and click on the texture name here and go into the texture library we'll go to basic and pick out one of these that might actually give us some watery shaped bump so we'll try swirl wave and see how that looks now in here I can choose actual selection so that'll give me a pressure of the surface and I also have the option of rendering with the current sky so looking at that it looks a little bit high frequency so you can l lower the frequency down and also got to pay close attention to this render mode now I'll go for world space this time so that seems the most appropriate one and uh, this means that no matter how the infinite plane is scaled the scaling of the material will be determined on the scale of the world it's in using this control here allows me to to adjust the frequency or scale of the material so you can see now it's looking more appropriate and we might need to have a look in the main render to see how that looks so yeah not very watery to be fair these swirls look a bit unnatural so if we go back into the material we could choose a different texture or we can modify the one we've got and I'd rather modify it and we have a look here we've got component 1 and component 2 added together but the final combination doesn't look like the addition of these two components so something else is going on and what we find is although you can't add noise into the final combination you can add phase and this is what's swirling the water up so what we'll do is we'll reduce this phase value and it'll give it less swirl and it might look a bit more realistic increase the frequency of the material slightly so back to the main render and have a look at that okay that's looking a little bit more watery the thing about water though with it being sort of reflective is that its appearance depends quite a lot on what it's reflecting in the background at the moment it's just reflecting the default bright sky and uh, we'll roll the sun round here into view you can see that uh, it uh, changes the appearance of the the water somewhat where, depending where the sun is so um, well, what you'd like to see perhaps is quite a highlight on the water so it's something we could we could do by adding in specularity whoops not metallicy in this case and uh, we can preview it here if we can find the right spot you see the specular effect creates this highlight and the other thing about it is with the having the bumpiness in the waves it might be appropriate to have some anisotropic effect so that should stretch the light out across the surface there nicely now the specular halo determines the size of this area so if it's very small you get a sharp effect and I'll just turn the anisotropy up so you can see how it affects the appearance of that uh, specular highlight there and so I'll go for a medium size specular halo at the moment and see how that looks in the render but again there's not very much for it to reflect so what we'll do now is add in some features for it to reflect now in that case we'll go to uh, brystutorials.info Bryce downloads. I'm going to use Horro's HDRI pack 1 again which uh, looks like that and can be found here and uh, I'm going to choose one just to be something that's in the background I've already made my selection it's this one uh, because there's no obviously visible Sun in the sky so we can add in the Bryce Sun and uh, most of the features are fairly distant so to get that into the scene Skylab IBL tab use HDRI image open navigate to where the HDRI is, there are several resolutions here including a specular convolved one we want the lowest resolution one for setting up and then for the final render we'll load in the higher resolution one I've got uh, render in scene here and you can see that the, the backdrop's looking very dark and this is because it's a HDRI image it's not really the way our eye uh, perceives the world the 
when we look at things our eyes adjust to whatever the brightness is of the thing we're looking at and we have a filter in Bryce that allows us to do that, this tone mapping and so that will create a more realistic background for as it would be viewed. We want the quality of the simulated light source to be set down to improve render time and uh, and uh, as yet, because we've only got water in the scene, we, we can't really judge whether or not the HDRI lighting effect is going to be sufficient to light something, so we'll have to add something else into the scene. I'll uh, re-enable the sunlight so we've got our highlight on the water, and we'll have a look at how that renders. So, OK, uh, the sun's interfering slightly, I'll just pop it out of sight a second. What we have here is some foreground objects which are sort of interfering with the horizon here so we might have to cover these up and that's a bit high for that so uh, with that plan in mind what I'm going to do is if I hold the control key down I can rotate the HDRI around and uh, around the side here uh, around about 70 degrees in this case is an area where the things on the in the foreground like this little bit of a hill here and that top of a tree could be easily covered up we can make a bank or a shore for our lake and uh, so what I'll do is go into the create menu hold down the control key and click on the terrain and that creates a terrain in default grey I'm going to enlarge that terrain because uh, I will be adding haze into this to give a sense of scale and so I want the terrain to interact with that haze and I'm going to edit the terrain to give it the shape that I'm looking for so uh, I want it to be solid because it's going to have bumpy material on I want it to render correctly and um, the fractal is um, rolling hills I'm going to use rolling hills in fractal and, and try and get something that looks like it will be suitable for um, inclusion into this scene so it's got to sort of match with the background using the brushing control because the camera is going to be under this position here I can brush out the foreground and maybe use mounds to, to add a few features to the terrain and then I can always brush, brush those foreground bits down again with this so they're not, not too intrusive in the foreground so we'll have a look how that looks in the scene looking from the left hand view then using the keyboard shortcuts I can lift the train up so the flattened bits just under the water then lower the the train down or lift it accordingly to see how it looks as my distant shore so it doesn't actually look that distant but then we've not switched the haze on yet so that might be the next thing to do I'm just going to edit that again have another play with the with what uh, the effects and see if we can get something something uh, what I'm, I'm looking for I want a certain degree of interest in this shoreline even though most of the, f the feature is the water I suppose it's got to interact with it and uh, and as I say, it's, it really ideally wants to not look out of place with respect to what we're seeing in the background. So in some respects, that's going to be a choice of materials as well. So I'm uh, still not happy with that. I did it again. I always do the fractal again. Try not to get something too radical. I'll try this one. And put the mounds in and see how that looks. Just a matter of lighting on something that uh, doesn't look out of place. OK, that's not too bad. Right, so where was I? We want to add some haze into the sky. Well, what I'm going to do is use the custom sky settings because that gives me a bit more control. Uh, this is the sky colour. That can be black. Um, this is the horizon colour. That can be black. In the uh, sky lab, I want to check that the backdrop is being added to the sky. So this gives a better integration for the effect I'm looking for and with the sky being black it means that just the HDRI colours come through and uh, I want the sun colour to be yellowy because it's going to set it low on the horizon and this is the sun glow colour, I'll make that yellow too um, I'll go back into the sky lab again, make a few changes a glow intensity, I'll reduce that otherwise it'll spill all the way across the sky and I'll leave the diffuse at 100 and the specular which I need for the highlight on the scene there um, in atmosphere I'm going to add a haze and I'm also going to blend it with the sun so that uh, the sun colours interact with that and I'm going to increase the effect here and that's going to result of the haze um, covering up some of my terrain I'll change the haze colour to grey so it darkens the landscape in parts so now even though that's only got grey on it's similar tones to the, the backdrop we're looking at there but I will give it a material so I'll go into the material lab 
go into the material library, look for and down here Pro Materials, LPAC 1, Autumn Woods and Rock. See how that looks with respect to what we've got here. So, so now, uh, even though we don't have much light um, we, from the HDRI, the haze is actually creating the illusion of some light, so the haze might be a bit strong. So we'll just lower that slightly because we can get some HDRI lighting in here, and that will bring in colours from the sky. So in the IBL tab, I'll raise the effect to 100. You see that's brought some colour in from the the HDRI from the 16 simulated light sources. So this is slightly bluish tinted now. And again, the idea is to match the tones with the the background there, so that it, this foreground doesn't look out of place. So it doesn't look too bad now. I know uh, hold Control and Alt and double click on the sun will bring me in control of the sun so that I can click control and alt and click on the scene and it will bring the icon of the sun in so I can position the sun in the scene. And you see now how adding the the sun to the backdrop allows the sun to make it look like it's in the the lens and I'm choosing a low angle so we get some light coming in across the terrain surface which emphasizes the bump effect. Right now I'll lower the sun still further and see how, what we can get away with. So here we go at a slightly lower angle still. Compositionally, we've got this split more or less 50-50 between the horizon going across the middle of the scene there, which is not usually ideal. So um, maybe either I want a symmetrical composition, in which case I don't want the water to be too bumpy, I want that to show a reflection of the background. So if I go back to the water surface and go in here, here we're looking at the water now, and you see how much better it looks, it's got something to reflect. We'll lower the bump still further, and I'm going to increase the frequency a little bit. So I'll say, um, now it's gone back to where it was, 3, and, and we'll have a look at that now. So now we've got a nice symmetry between the reflected background uh, in the water, and uh, you can see that we can see a bit of what's going on underneath the water, which is this material and uh, we can also see the highlight from the sun in the sky. Perhaps this aspect ratio could be emphasized uh, slightly. So if we go File, Document, Setup, used 2, two to 1 instead, and um, that'll give us a sort of uh, more of a letterbox format, and that might be, appear you know, more suitable to this subject, because as I say, you wouldn't normally aim to get the horizon exactly dividing your scene in half and if if you do then you want a good reason for it and I would suggest you that this, this idea of uh, having the split composition was is quite uh, quite appropriate so the final thing is to you can see this is still low resolution even though we've had a few render passes over it and also it looks like this haze line is clipping the top of that terrain so we can lift the haze slightly and then we have to turn the clouds back off because that's turned them on and that's made the sky go bright so uh, holding the alt key down and clicking on that will turn the clouds back off again and that should get rid of that line of across the top of the terrain there and finally we need to load in the higher resolution backdrop so well that looks like the very highest available but it's going to take a little time to load in which is a worry because I'm looking at the clock right oh that's in a different format but it does seem to still be accepted so we'll tone map it and we'll check we've still got that uh, setting for its rotation it's just taking a while to tone map because it's got to process quite a, a large image now okay that's tone mapped we'll uh, re-enable the sun go into atmosphere turn the haze back on go into IBL tab check that we've got add to sky selected that should restore the original position we were in before and we'll give that a render it's going to take oh, it says 26 seconds but I bet it's going to take longer than that so I'll pause the video and you can see the final image in a second and there then is the final render it took about two and a half minutes uh, the final AA pass over the water was uh, what slowed it down so uh, Bryce wasn't very good predicting the render time in in that case. Well, I hope that uh, I hope you enjoyed that, and uh, will inspire you to make a landscape with a lake in it.